Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. The Darth Vader comic series has returned with its second issue, and man oh man, in the previous issue, Darth Vader was hunting down those that hid his son Luke from him, wanting to exact vengeance upon them, but not before he crossed paths with a surprising and shocking individual, the last person he would have expected to see, Padme. And it picks right up where we left off in issue one, so let's break it down. The issue opens and we see that Darth Vader is recalling those all too familiar moments from Attack of the Clones when Padme first professed her love to Anakin as they were about to enter Petronaki Arena on Geonosis. We also see him recalling the moments where Padme fought off a Nexu, of Anakin and Padme fighting together, and of Padme telling Anakin she wanted to proclaim her love to him before they possibly perish. We then return to Darth Vader on Vendaxa, standing before the woman that Vader believes is Padme, and she's taken aback by the fact that Vader has has called her Padme. As Z67 introduces Vader to her, she wastes no time and starts blasting, but Vader uses the force to block the blaster bolt and toss away her blaster. Vader then questions the Padme lookalike and asks who she is, to which she responds that she's Padme Amidala, queen, senator, daughter of Naboo, back from the grave to haunt him. Enraged by her response, Vader uses the force to lift her in the air and choke her, but this forces him to recall his violent outburst against Padme Padme on Mustafar during Revenge of the Sith. Because of that, Vader releases his force hold of the Padme lookalike, which results in one of those gross-ass creatures from last episode wrapping a tentacle around Vader as he's distracted, and Z67 lets us know that they're called Vendaxan Land Squid, that they're seldom aggressive, but it's their breeding season and they only get a chance to spawn once every 10 years. Meanwhile, the Padme lookalike is then able to run from Vader as he fights off these nasty looking creatures. Once Vader disposes of all of the Vandaxan land squid, he and Z67 descend into the lower level of the base where they catch up to our mysterious character and Vader asks who she really is, continuing to have flashbacks of Padme. Vader begins to piece together who this mysterious individual is, however, stating that she has the face and voice of Padme, but that she's the Queen's Shadow, a handmaiden from Naboo, which was what I guessed in my review for issue 1, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Z67 then states that, based on information in the Imperial Data Bank, their physical features, and the tone of their voice, that this person is in fact Sabe, Padme Amidala's personal handmaiden. In the canon book Queen's Shadow by E.K. Johnston, we learn that Sabe and Captain Tanra set out to discover the details of Padme's untimely death. Captain Tanra was a captain in the Royal Naboo Security Forces, whom acted as a bodyguard for Padme even after her tenure as Queen had come to an end. Tanra and Sabe both took up new aliases as they set off on this mission and Queen's Shadow ended with Sabe being contacted by Bail Organa, but before readers could find out what Bail had to discuss with Sabe, the book ended. Many guessed that Sabe would be joining the Rebellion, and this issue pretty much confirms that as we see her fighting in a rebel base along with other rebels. We then see Vader probing Sabe to learn what she discovered when she broke into Padme's apartment on Cor years ago, but Sabe doesn't know exactly what happened to Padme, as she thinks that the Emperor is responsible for Padme's death. Vader lets Sabe know, to her disbelief, that Padme was stolen away before her death and hidden from the Empire. And as we all know, this is due to Obi-Wan bringing Padme to the asteroid field Polis Massa, where she gave birth to Luke and Leia before dying. Vader declares that he will discover who hid Padme from the Empire and kill them, and he actually convinces Sabe to join him on his mission, as they'll be able to find the culprits and get their revenge against them together. Sabe seems to be more concerned at this point with finding out how Padme died rather than help topple the Empire. We soon learn that, right when Sabe got to the lower level of the base, she opened up a gate to allow Vendax and Land Squid to overrun the base, thinking that Vader was going to be killing her. At this point, Vader and Sabe team up to kill the Horde descending upon them, prompting Vader to recall the moments during a Attack of the Clones, where he and Padme fought together in Petronaki Arena on Geonosis. Vader and Sabe make quick work of the Vendax and Land Squid and prepare to leave the base and continue in their mission to find who hid Padme from the Empire. On their way out of the base, Sabe orders Z67 to help her in burying the fallen rebel soldiers to give them a proper burial. Sabe also states that these dead soldiers walked with her at Padme's funeral. We know one of the rebel fighters was a Gungan, so it appears that they were 
all from Naboo. I'd like to point out that Z67's comments throughout this issue are all great, and I particularly enjoyed his comments during this scene. While reading this issue, I realized that we've seen a similar droid as Z67 previously in the Clone Wars. Z67 is a crime scene analysis droid, which is the exact same model of the droid that assisted Ahsoka and Anakin in their investigation into the Jedi Temple bombing on Coruscant during the Season 5 story arc of the Clone Wars. That droid's designation was Russo ISC. We then return to Darth Vader and his newly found associate, Sabe, Lee Vendaxa, in the Imperial Lambda Class T4A shuttle. Sabe explains that her and someone or multiple individuals, most likely her and Captain Tanra, broke into Padme's apartment on Coruscant and stole the chamber security recordings there but couldn't decrypt them. After that, Sabe and whomever she was working with put trying to decrypt crypt the recordings on hold as they focused their efforts on combating the Empire, but hid the recordings on Naboo. Vader then begins to have flashbacks to he and Padme's wedding on Naboo, where Padme told him not to be afraid. And at this point, Vader thinks to himself, I'm not. I'm angry. And that's where the issue ends. Guys, I'm seriously loving this series so far. While I think issue 1 was a little bit more of an emotional roller coaster, issue 2 was nonetheless stellar. Mixing the flashbacks and memories to Anakin slash Vader's time with Padme is just emotionally reeling. And it really helps to humanize Vader as he's often just viewed as a monstrous killing machine. But underneath that armor, we know there's still a sliver of that person that Anakin once was. And that sliver is ever so slowly growing and will eventually lead to his return to the light. But what do you guys think of this issue? Do you like that Sabe has teamed up with Darth Vader to uncover the details of Padme's death? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.